Hey guys, thank you for watching the Slat Rock channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified every time we post a new video. And if you've already done so, just make sure that it's still active. Last night, the WWE took over the Scotiabank Arena in Toronto, Ontario, Canada for their biggest party of the summer, SummerSlam. The 32nd annual show under the name, the company certainly had a lot to prove after months of falling attendances, but it seems the fans in the sold-out arena got sent home happy thanks to an exciting, dramatic main event. The rest of the show was hit and miss depending on your preference. One issue with the show was that it played things too safe, a real issue for what is supposed to be the second biggest pay-per-view of the year. Out of the total seven title matches across the 12 bouts, only one title changed hands, and that came in the main event of the show. But without further delay, here is our review of WWE SummerSlam 2019. On the kickoff show, Cruiserweight Champion Drew Gulak hoped to keep hold of the title he won at Extreme Rules, and did just that with a decisive victory over Oni Lorcan. Lorcan, who became the number one contender on the most recent edition of 205 Live, didn't get much time to get any of his offense in, as Gulak used a distracted referee to his advantage, punching Lorcan in the throat when the official's back was turned. With Lorcan dazed by the attack, the 205 Live star was easy pickings for Gulak, who retained the gold with his Cyclone Crash finisher for the 1-2-3. Next up on the kickoff show, fans saw Buddy Murphy take on Apollo Crews, though the match was more about storytelling than in-ring action. That's not to say these two superstars can't wrestle, far from it in fact, but the match came to an abrupt end by the appearance of Eric Rowan, who caused the Australian star to get the win via disqualification. This attack stems from the most recent edition of SmackDown Live when Murphy told an irate Roman Reigns that it was Rowan responsible for the attack on the big dog the week prior with a lighting rig, as well as recently on Raw in a car accident. Exhausted from his match with Cruz, the former cruiserweight champion was easy pickings for Rowan, who demolished the Australian with a powerbomb into the ring post, telling the self-proclaimed best-kept secret, keep my name out of your mouth. All of this was looked over by Daniel Bryan, who watched the attack from backstage, as it seems the quest to find out who really attacked the big dog is far from over. In the main event of the kickoff show, new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss defended their gold against former champions the Iconics. A match added to the card just hours before the kickoff show began, this rushed booking was echoed in the match, as the four didn't provide anything close to a big match feel thanks in part to some in-ring sloppiness. Bliss, a known cosplay enthusiast, wore an attire based on Toy Story character Buzz Lightyear, but didn't seem to have the same intensity as the Star Command leader, picking up the win with a right hand and a twisted Bliss on Peyton Royce, while Cross kept Billy Kay at bay at ringside. The title change that occurred on this week's Raw was reportedly meant to be at SummerSlam, though given the reaction by the fans in the Scotiabank Arena, it seems the Red Brand's executive director Paul Heyman made the right call in moving the match. With the kickoff show out of the way, it was time for WWE SummerSlam to properly begin, and the company certainly gave fans a huge opener with Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch and Natalya. Meeting in a submission match, the two succeeded in getting the crowd invested emotionally, a tough feat given the match that had come before. Naturally, the Toronto crowd were very pro Natalia at the start, though the man was able to win them over during the contest. Applying Natalia's own sharpshooter, Lynch definitely got a big reaction by the crowd, which was turned up a notch when the Canadian was able to lock in the champ's own disarm her to try and win the title. Able to lock in her own sharpshooter mere moments later, Natalia nearly had the match won until Becky proved why she is the man, locking her opponent into the disarm her for a tap-out victory that certainly popped the crowd. In a surprising move by WWE, the next match was one of their biggest on the card, as WWE Hall of Famer Bill Goldberg returned to the ring to take on Dolph Ziggler. Arguably the most predictable match on the show, the contest had very little story going in, as the actual match was only made official on this week's Raw, despite the company teasing a match between Ziggler and The Miz. Of course, the bigger story behind this match is what happened at Super Showdown, as Goldberg couldn't help but show his age in Jeddah, and was looking to wipe the match with The Undertaker from the minds of the WWE Universe. 
Before he was able to do so, though, Ziggler cut an obnoxious promo, calling himself the best damn thing to happen to pro wrestling, and was able to catch Goldberg off guard with an early superkick that produced a two count. From there, though, everything went Goldberg's way, as the former Universal Champion squashed Ziggler with a stiff looking spear and a jackhammer to get the win. Post match, things got even stranger, as Ziggler would insult the man who had just beaten him, disparaging the Hall of Famer's return to the company, but paid for his insults with not one, but two further beatdowns. If the WWE was hoping to erase the memory of the match at Super Showdown, then this is certainly a way to do it. It's just a shame that Ziggler's character needed to be demolished so badly for them to do it. Next on the show we saw United States Championship action as AJ Styles defended the gold against the same man he beat for it at Extreme Rules, Ricochet. Entering with the OC, Gallows and Anderson by his side, Styles was oozing confidence heading into his fourth SummerSlam, though this match did seem too similar to the last time the pair met on pay-per-view. At Extreme Rules, Styles won the gold thanks to the interference of Gallows and Anderson, and despite this, Ricochet did nothing to counter the two tag team stars at ringside. To be fair, the match was definitely one of the better contests of the evening, as the Phenomenal One and Ricochet once again deliver crisp, entertaining spots, including the former NXT star using the OC to perform a Huracan Rana. After a hot open though, the match did cool down significantly, as it seems fans in the arena got disinterested with what was happening in the ring. Perhaps this is due to the amount of times the pair have faced off before, as though the duo always provide fun, interesting matches, there is only so much the WWE Universe can take before they get bored. What also hurt the match was that it never felt like Ricochet had a chance of winning, as he was essentially fighting three people at once, all the while selling an injured leg. Never taking command for an extended period of time, no one believed the young superstar was going to win the gold, and though these two have delivered repeatedly in the ring together, we think it's time for Styles and Ricochet to move on to other opponents. Up next we had the SmackDown Women's Championship on the line as Bayley was able to retain her title against Ember Moon. Though it was good to see Moon finally get a shot at the gold on the main roster, the match was sadly nothing special, as it felt like another run-of-the-mill match that could have taken place during an episode of SmackDown instead of the biggest party of the summer. One main issue with this feud is that Ember has never looked credible in the run-up to this match, as a fluke roll-up win over Charlotte Flair was what won her the number one contendership, and that only came after Bayley had distracted the Queen. The following week, Ember lost clean to Alexa Bliss in tag team action and finished her journey to SummerSlam by being locked in the sharpshooter by Natalya, and was only saved by her opponent, Bayley. With all of this negativity, it's no wonder why fans didn't buy for a second that Ember was going to win, and the match was as regular as you can get, a real shame given the talent of the two women involved. Speaking of matches fans predicted well in advance, up next we had Kevin Owens taking on Shane McMahon in the culmination of an epic feud. After months of attacking Shane O'Mac, Owens promised to quit WWE if he lost the match, so the best in the world stacked the deck in his favor. With Elias serving as ringside enforcer, things were clearly in Shane's favor, and what followed was some rather predictable booking practices that have been used throughout the years. During the match, Owens fought off constant interference from the outside and was nearly counted out on multiple occasions. When Owens ducked a McMahon fist that instead hit Elias, it seemed the former Universal Champion had things won, hitting a frog splash on the boss that would have been the end if Elias hadn't pulled the ref from the ring. A running senton was able to take out a referee and Elias for good, though when the former came to, the official saw the Canadian with a steel chair. Taking the chair away, this didn't stop the prize fighter from fighting dirty, as kicking McMahon low with the referee's back turned allowed Owens to get the stunner for the win. An entertaining match for sure, but we can't help but wonder what's next for Shane McMahon. Even though he lost, Shane's career was never on the line, and given his last name, the son of the chairman can go wherever he pleases. It seems with his win, Owens just earned the opportunity to have to deal with Shane's antics a little longer. Though Kevin Owens was able to avoid his career coming to an end, Trish Stratus didn't have the same outcome. As win, lose, or draw, the Canadian promised to hang up her wrestling boots for good after her match with Charlotte Flair. With this bombshell announcement, the match had a huge emotional story behind it, 
And though it was her final match ever, the 43-year-old mother of two brought her A-game to the Scotiabank Arena. Though it's been many years since Stratus wrestled full-time in WWE, Trish held her own against Flair, as the match became a symbolic passing of the torch, much like the WrestleMania 18 match between Hulk Hogan and The Rock that happened in the same city. A, a slow burner from the start, the match gradually increased in intensity as Trish's fighting spirit kept the heel Charlotte in a foul mood. Applying more pressure to the Hall of Famer, Stratus was able to withstand an onslaught by the Queen, as the pair used counters and counter counters to tell an even matchup. Eventually, it was Flair who got the win via submission, and though the match wasn't perfect, with Corey Graves pointing out Stratus' shoulders on the mat when Trish locked in the figure eight, these slight errors didn't diminish the story that was told. Arguably the match of the night, Trish proved why she has been considered the greatest female WWE superstar for so long, while Flair showed just why she is well on her way to taking that accolade from the master of Stratisfaction. After such an epic and emotional contest, it seemed the fans needed a cool-down match and definitely got one when WWE Champion Kofi Kingston defended his title against Randy Orton. Though the story before the match had been great, with many real-life issues between the two playing into the narrative, none of that could help what was essentially a dud of a match that ended in a double count-out finish. After a lackluster 16 minutes, the match came to a sad end when Orton trash-talked with Kofi's kids at ringside, causing the New Day star to retaliate with an attack on the outside, causing the count-out draw. If this finish seems similar, it's because the same tactic was used at last year's SummerSlam between then-WWE Champion AJ Styles and Samoa Joe, and the fans last night clearly didn't care for the repeat. Orton's actions against his family caused Kofi to snap, and though Kingston battering Orton with a kendo stick should have caused some kind of reaction, it didn't, as the fans were still bitter about the ridiculous finish to what had been an underwhelming title match. Though that match had been a dud, the WWE Universe and the Scotiabank Arena certainly came alive for the next match between Bray Wyatt and Finn Balor. From the start, the returning Wyatt had fans hooked, with a remix Broken Out in Love serenading The Fiend to the ring, with the imagery of Wyatt's own severed head definitely adding to the creep factor. Once the match started, things got even better, as the new, more demented Wyatt dominated Balor for the majority of the contest. Though Balor got in some offense near the end, it was clear that he was no match for The Fiend, as WWE have pulled out an incredible transformation for a superstar fans have wanted to see succeed for years. With 11 matches down, it was finally time for the main event of the show, as Universal Champion Brock Lesnar put his title on the line against the man who he took the gold from, Seth Rollins. Despite what has been a pretty plain build which has seen Rollins get demolished on a weekly basis, the two put out a better match than anyone expected, as the architect won the adoration of a crowd which have been lukewarm to him in recent weeks. Nursing a rib injury early in the match, Rollins overcame an early beating and a plethora of suplexes to work his way back into the match with a surprisingly motivated beast. The spot of the match, and indeed the night, came during the middle of this contest, as a leap from the top rope saw Seth hit a frog splash onto Lesnar through an announce table. Though Rollins would hit a second frog splash in the ring, this didn't stop Brock from getting Seth in position for the F5, though the Architect was able to counter into a superkick and his second curb stomp of the night to get the win. Slaying the Beast for the second time in four months, Rollins didn't have to use a low blow like his first win at WrestleMania, but instead it was the Architect's tactics and skills that won him the day and his second reign as WWE Universal Champion. So what can we take away from SummerSlam 2019? Well, what started out to be an average, watchable night of wrestling ended up becoming one of the best shows of the year. Major props have to go for The Fiend's debut, as well as the performances of Charlotte and Stratus, as well as the Universal title main event. The show did have its flaws though, as many matches felt way too predictable, especially the US and SmackDown women's title matches, but on the whole, SummerSlam was clearly a huge success for the company. A success it's clear WWE needed. Well guys, that's our news for today. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like this video, don't forget to check out our previous video. 10 huge shocking WWE 2019 rumors you need to know about. 
Also check out our other high rated videos by clicking at the upper right hand corner or down in the description field. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss a single new video. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and as always, thank you for watching.